Welcome back. We're going to continue with sucrose today. For this lecture, we'll talk about other sucrose products like brown sugar, liquid sugar, fondant sugar, and powdered sugar. For the brown sugar, it's incomplete purified table sugar. It's normally made by adding back the cane sugar with molasses to give it a desired brownness and taste. Powdered sugar. It's a pulverized table sugar plus 3% cornstarch as anti-caking agents. Fondant sugar. It's a type of sugar usually used in icing and confections. It's made of very fine sucrose crystals surrounded by a saturated solution of inverted sugar, corn syrup, or maltodextrin. For the liquid sugar, it's a refined aqueous solution of sucrose. Sucrose is also used as cryoprotectant agent because sucrose can form a highly concentrated solution that uses as sweeteners, preservative, and humectant. And in solution of sucrose, the freezing point goes down when the sucrose concentration increases. Due to the extensive industrialization and widespread consumer acceptance and consumption of sucrose, numerous chemical modifications have been undertaken to enhance the functionality of sucrose molecule. One example is sucrose ester. Sucrose ester is made of sucrose connected with fatty acids. So the fatty acid chain is hydrophobic and sucrose head is hydrophilic, which makes it a great emulsifier agent. Another sucrose derivative that is worth mentioning is Olestra. This is a, a calorie-free frying oil substitute. A typical frying oils consist of triglycerides, which are composed of glycerol head and fatty acids chains. In the production of Olestra, the uh, glycerol head is replaced with sucrose. Since sucrose has multiple reaction sites, which means almost around eight different fatty acids chains can be substituted onto one sucrose molecule. The reaction makes sucrose, or you can say olestra, a very big molecule that the digestive enzymes fail to assess or metabolize it. The unique structure of olestra triggers a lot of safety and health related issues. We have a short video that demonstrates the issues associated with the Lystra. You may know of CSPI as the organization that lobbied to get the nutrition label on all packaged foods. Also, we're the organization, the popcorn people, who blew the whistle on movie fun. The FDA must protect the public from an additive that has already caused severe symptoms and might even cause deaths if those symptoms occurred when the victim was engaged in a risky activity such as swimming or driving. It's only a matter of time before products containing Olestra cause deaths. The only thing that should die is Olestra itself. In the evening, came home and decided that I would have some of those chips as a snack. On. This pain was so sharp and of such a magnitude that I would say it was almost like the beginning of a labor. The, the very onset of labor feels very much like that, a very sharp gas type pain. And that's what I was having, and I, and I did have those for hours. For the FDA committee last year, I expressed some very severe reservations about this material. If it wasn't a lester that they had, but some other unknown agent in their food, we call their symptoms food poisoning and we'd say that they had dysentery, some of them. And that's a pretty serious health effect.
It may paradoxically get us to help people stick to healthier diets. Remember, it's only being introduced as a snack food as a very first step. So my view is, let's not throw out the baby with the bathwater. A little bit of temporary indigestion shouldn't hold back the introduction of what may be one of the most significant scientific breakthroughs of the next century. Another famous sucrose derivative is called sucralose, marketed under the well-known brand name Splenda. Sucralose is the chemical name of this artificial sweetener, patented in 1976. It is recognized for its unique composition as chlorinated derivative of sucrose. Sucralose is highly valued for for its exceptional sweetness and remarkable. Stability under high temperature, making it a widely utilized sugar substitute in a variety of different food and beverages applications. But we're on your side tonight with something potentially dangerous sitting right there on your kitchen table or your kitchen counter. A new study discovered a chemical found in sucralose, sold under the trade name Splenda, may pose some serious health risk. And tonight we have your three things to know. Thing one: where this conclusion came from. Researchers from North Carolina State University and the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill found the chemical that forms when we digest Splenda is jadoc. Genotoxic, genotoxic, meaning it breaks up DNA. And then thing two, the risk of putting this in your body. It was determined that gut cells exposed to sucralose affected genes cause oxidative stress. That means it can damage tissues and organs, which can then lead to diseases, including cancer, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, diabetes, and heart disease. One of the authors of the study at North Carolina State University spoke more about this. What it does is it damages the little connections between the cells, and it can let compounds, let, let ingredients, for example, in the food supply or other compounds le leach into your body that should be uh, excreted in the in the uh, from the intestines. Also, sucralose itself will damage the uh, the bacteria in the cell in the in the gut, and it, and it kills off the good bacteria, which is not good. All right, thing three, you're watching this and you realize you have Splenda in your pantry, so now what? Well, if nothing else, Schiffman encourages people to avoid products containing sucralose. It's something you should not be eating. Please type the answers of the quiz questions in the discussion forum. Let's watch a short video to recap this lecture. Have you ever wondered why sucrose, the scientific name for table sugar, is so commonly used? Aside from being a sweetener, preservative, and humectant, sucrose has a fascinating role as a cryoprotectant agent. But what exactly does that mean? In simple terms, a cryoprotectant is a substance used to protect biological tissue from freezing damage. Sucrose's unique properties make it particularly suited for this role. First and foremost, sucrose can form highly concentrated solutions. This is crucial because the freezing point of a solution decreases as the concentration of sucrose increases. This property is why sucrose is often used in the food industry to prevent ice crystal formation in frozen products, preserving the texture and quality of the food. Sucrose derivatives also play a significant role in the food industry. Take sucrose esters, for example. These compounds, which have one, two, or three fatty acids attached, are often used as surfactants or emulsifiers, helping to mix water and oil. Then there's the fat replacer, a derivative of sucrose attached with six to eight fatty acids. An example of this is Alestra, a frying oil substitute from P&G, which is not metabolized or absorbed by the body. Now let's delve into the world of artificial sweeteners, specifically sucralose, also known as trichlorosucrose. Discovered and patented by 1976 under the brand name Splenda in the U.S., it is an astounding 250 to 1,000 times sweeter than sucrose. It tastes similar to sucrose without any bitterness and is stable under heat and over a wide range of pH. 
plus it has zero calories and does not promote dental cavities. The world of sucrose derivatives doesn't end there. Fructooligosaccharides, or FOS like Kestose and NeoSugar, are also derivatives of sucrose. Produced by treating a concentrated solution of sucrose with invertase or a fungal transferase, they are 50% as sweet as sucrose and non-karyogenic, meaning they do not cause tooth decay. To summarize, sucrose is an incredibly versatile substance. Its ability to form highly concentrated solutions and lower the freezing point of these solutions makes it an excellent cryoprotectant agent. It is widely used in the food industry to prevent freezing damage and maintain product quality. Its derivatives, including sucrose esters, fat replacers like Olestra, and artificial sweeteners like sucralose, further expand its uses. So the next time you sprinkle some sugar on your morning cereal, remember, you're not just sweetening your breakfast, you're using a scientific marvel.